This is Spencer from the MacGuffin. Today I'm joined by Michael Stalker. Uh, what was your exact position? Animation supervisor? I was uh, animation supervisor. Okay, Finding on Door. Finding yes. Door. Yeah, that's right. Um, the latest and greatest film from Pixar, which is always an exciting thing to have happening. Thank you. Oh. Um, I want to dive right in. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> and sort of talk about, this is a film that's coming out 13 years after right. the predecessor. It seems like you've actually been in the situation before coming into a franchise that is doing a sequel several years after uh, the previous entry. Uh -huh. Is that a challenging uh, element to a project or is Pixar just so finely tuned at this point that you just like, you step in and you're ready to go on the next uh, project? I would say that every project we do feels like we're starting over in a way. Like there's, it's, there's nothing finely tuned about making a good story. It's really hard. Yeah. Uh, and you guys just make it look so easy. Maybe, but it's really, really hard. I mean, we, we, there's a lot of, a lot of struggle and throwing stuff out and starting again. And, and, and uh, again, I think every time we make a movie, there's a point in that movie where it's really, really bad. Mm. And um, and that and it's good because we're trying stuff. I'll always try and use to you know to make it good. But from that point of view, all eyes are on it, and we're we're throwing out ideas. And and it just the movie's never done until it's done. Which it's is, great policy. Yeah. I wish more studios followed that. Yeah, I mean, it's constantly on the table. Everyone's make a filmmaker there. They all have opinions and great opinions, and it's just sort of finding finding our way through that for sure. Is it tough to sort of try and get back into those mindsets of you know these franchises that were made? I mean, in this case, thirteen years before, and sort of be like, okay, what did we do? that was so successful the first time out and how can we capture these characters again? Because For I mean, sure. it has been so long since yeah. you actually were sort of in the mindset of who these characters were. It's interesting because it has, it's been 13 years and that's a long time, I suppose. Um, Andrew sort of didn't find his idea. I mean, other things, we've made other movies, we've done a lot. He didn't really find his idea till now. Mm. Um, then there was never a plan to sort of like, hey, this is a franchise. It's just, just we made this movie and um, the world is amazing, and people love living in that world for an hour and a half. It's just, it, there's a sort of hypnotic feel to being underwater, and it's beautiful in the yeah. reef and all of that. People love that. The music is um, by Thomas Newman is incredible. Uh, but so when, as we started, what's interesting is we started to make this next one, there's only a handful of people who were around who made the first one. So there was a big sort of, we had to go to, first of all, we rebuilt all the characters. We, you don't just get them for free. We had to remake them. Yeah. And then, uh, and then teach everyone sort of how to how they move. Mm, we had the benefit of seeing what was done in the first movie, so we could start from what we thought were sort of the best scenes from the best shots, and like, mm. oh, that that's something very successful about that shot. Let's take that and sort of like see if we can't use that more in the next movie. So we had the benefit of that, but we also had to sort of we had to sort of honor that world, and uh, people are very very attached to that world. Oh they no, love absolutely. that movie. Yeah. Um, and we had to we had to make sure that this movie was as good as that movie. One of the interesting things that you sort of touch upon that I was wondering about was the sort of technological issues in regards to that. I mean, obviously, we're 13 years later. Technology yeah. has greatly advanced, perhaps because of Pixar's sort of more cartoonish style. It's a little bit easier to adjust to. But, I mean, there's a, a huge technological advance since the original Finding Nemo. Yes. Was it difficult to sort of like try and maintain the sort of original feel while at the same time embracing newer technologies and stuff? Because I'm sure people are so used to seeing mm -hmm. Finding Nemo from mm -hmm. that 2003 version, like to actually, you know, make it so much more vibrant or something might be jarring if you tried to do too much. For sure. Once. Yeah. Well, I mean, we had to make the reef the reef, right? Like we couldn't make it a new reef or a different reef. It had yeah. to be that one. Yeah. Uh, but we had to rebuild all of those classic characters. So, for example, Dory, if we were to just open Dory with our software today, it would not, <laughs> yeah. it would break. It was, yeah. it just, it's like, um, uh, so, but what was interesting was trying to rebuild it was really difficult. As soon as we, we, would, we would rebuild it and then move the mouth, instantly you could tell that's not Dory. It would go off model really, really quick. Yeah. And, and, you could, and because we know Dory so well, or Marlin or Nemo, it was instantaneously off model. So we had to work really, really hard to match. I mean, we spent 
good year, year and a half, trying to match them exactly. Yeah, I, would, I mean, I would imagine like characters back then would be like a magnitude of order of polygons and characters smaller and less sure. detailed. It must be very complex, especially like mouths and stuff where it's so much more detailed probably now. Yeah, I mean, I the imagine. controls we were using back then were just different controls. And we would, the, every character was different. Like w one set of controls to move a character around was completely different than the other. It was just sort of <laughs> hodgepodge. We were kind of figuring it out as we go. And now yeah, it's a lot more, too. all the characters are sort of the same, but just just different controls. We had to build them so that they did the same thing with different controls, and so it it was it was definitely challenging. And then all of our new characters, for sure, we were free to sort of just rebuild them, um, and we didn't have to. We could they had to fit into the world, right? So they we kind of it's kind of a realistic world. It's not like we have them walking on feet, right? Or you know that we had to honor that sort of world. So the characters had to fit into that world. Um, is is so. that actually kind of challenging? Because you're right, it is, it's not a completely cartoonish world, but there is a lot of actual realistic detail in terms of like, yes. like water yeah. and movements. Yeah. And, you know, I remember, uh, I think it was monsters being big on terms of like the, uh, the fur movement right. and stuff like that. Right. Is it sort of challenging to sort of balance those two um, aspects of making a film like this, where you, at, the, at one point you want it to be as... I mean, take advantage of all the new toys, so to speak, that you can when doing this animation. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're trying to make this, um, I don't, I feel, saying it feel cartoonish doesn't feel like the right word. Making it feel in line maybe with the predecessor sure, or something like sure. that. Sure, It, yes, uh, it was, so yes, we have created this sort of realistic world, right? This ocean world, fish are swimming like fish. In case in point, we have an octopus in the movie, uh, yeah. and in, you know there's been octopuses done in the past, and there, yeah. there we are, in our world, Hank, Hank, the, yeah, the octopus. octopus yeah. We're trying to mimic what a real octopus can do. That is very very hard to do in the computer, uh, and it's just really it was a it was a super challenging character. I mean, we went to. Um, the Monterey Bay, and we actually went backstage, and we actually wow. held. We, they took us back. We held an octopus. Wow. They had, we fed him. The octopus came up out of the water and was was like wrapped around. I held a seventy pound <laughs> octopus in my wow. hand, um, and we were sort of we pet it like a. And it just they're super intelligent creatures. And if you watch how they move, you can't kind of figure it out. Mm, it's like how are they transporting themselves through the water? How are they actually doing this? From an animator point of view, you look at it. It's very intimidating. Um, so we spent a lot of time building a rig that can do all things that an octopus can do because we're, they can do a lot of things. They can ink and sure. they can change color. They can morph into <laughs> other characters in this weird, they do these weird things. Yeah. We needed to do them all. So we had to build a rig that could do that. And then we as animators had to sort of go to Hank boot camp and learn how to move an octopus around mm, realistically. And then on top of that, put a performance. And in this case, Hank might do some things that are some kind of humanish. Drink coffee, for example, or do some of these weird things. That that therein lies the entertainment. There's yeah. the hook. They can do these sort of humanist. As you layer those things on there, it becomes really, really fun to watch. Is it challenging at all to sort of, or I mean, I guess it would be a question of, does um, the technology at all sort of dictate what you can do in the movie, or is it mm -hmm. a matter of, you know, this is what we want to do in the script. Find a way to make it happen in the technology. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean. Theoretically, you guys could do probably anything you want, but at the same time, if like an octopus were to fly or something like that, it would be a completely sort of bizarre sort yeah. of reality sort of situation. But at the same time, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's some things that are probably just not feasible at the moment. Like, I mean, I guess it's not as difficult perhaps if you were doing maybe photorealistic or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure there are still things like, you know, Doing fur in like 2003 versus doing For fur sure. in 2000. We could not have. I don't think we could have done Hank in the, in the first Nemo. We did. I mean, we could have done something, but it wouldn't have been what we're, we're on, we've put on the screen with Hank today. Like we needed that those cycles of movies to build technology to figure out how to make this thing work. So that's an example for, you know. So is this an element of sort of like, as you guys have just gone through this process, you've sort of evolved to know where your technology is so that you could say like, okay, this is something we can do in this project. Or was there an element of like, you try out different things along the way and say like, let's see if we can make this work right. within no. the movie. And then it's like either yes, it does or no, it doesn't. Well, or I, I can't ever think of a time when a technology, we said, Let's try something, and then we couldn't do it technolog technologically, and so we said that's out. 
Well, I don't. I can't think of a time. I mean, before this movie started, Hank was in the movie right from the beginning. Andrew pinned it up, and we were like, "This, I don't. Uh, can we do this?" And but we we were not gonna. We had to make it happen. Yeah. It, was, it, it was it was a cool thing to do. It was important in the story to have him in there. Sure. Um, so I can't. I can't think of a time where we sort of edited ourselves, well, and and we like our uh, storytellers to not edit. So we want them to be like, which here. is great. Yeah, yeah. We'll just I, I, put it in there. We'll figure out a way. Maybe I'm thinking of like you know the past world where everything took forever to render, and maybe something was just not feasible because it took so long to render that it was not. We've had we, even on this movie, we've had we had shots in the movie that take weeks and weeks and weeks to render because of just I mean they're beautiful, they're amazing, but you know. Is that a scary thing, though, if you're doing, you got, you, I mean, I don't know. I think last hour you guys spent, like, you know, four years or three yeah. or four years making these films. Um, that you could spend, like, two weeks working on something <laughs> and then it'd be like, no, 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 that doesn't work out, actually. Hopefully we planned it out so that that doesn't come up. I think we all like sort of living out there in that place that's scary. That's uh, out of that, it becomes some really cool stuff. And I think when we do a movie and you look at it and you're like, well, what are we going to challenge ourselves in this movie? That... I think we, we, we relish in the challenge part of it. So trying to find things that haven't been done before or haven't done in a certain way, uh, we look for those. We want to do that. Is, is that something that you sort of look at throughout your career? Because I know you, I mean, as, as far as I could tell back, you worked on things like The Lion King, I believe. That was my first 2D, movie, yeah. Uh, 2D yeah. animation. Is that something that you sort of look at as a challenge, just every film out? Like, what can we do to sort of, like build on what we've done before because I mean obviously going from 2D to 3D mm -hmm. is a, a massive change you know yeah. going from what it was in 2003 to what it is now in right. 2016 right. is a massive change is that something that really you appreciate as an animator or is that just something that has worked out well for uh, you know Pixar or what What exactly is it you know because yeah that, I think I, mean, I think it's all those things that you're saying I think uh, in when I, I worked for Disney for 10 years and worked on a you know a handful of different and each project I worked on was very different and within each project there's a certain challenge that like oh I, I'm interested in tackling um, you know this character on this movie uh, and uh, so I think that for the for animators they look for those challenging things mm -hmm. oh I haven't done I haven't done I've never done car that would be interesting. interesting. So let's figure that out. Uh, I haven't done, you know, I think there's part of that. I think there's also just from a nuts and bolts point of view, like our next movie is this, so we're going to learn how to animate rats. Um, how would Ratatouille run around? we got to figure that out. Um, so there's part of that, but I think within those there's these certain challenges. So absolutely, at being at Pixar, every movie, you see, all, and we're making more movies. I mean, it was just at 1.1 1 .1 every right, couple of like years. A, now we're two making a, year a few almost, more. Yeah. A few, uh, and so definitely there's challenges within every movie that we make that I think the animators gravitate to. I think we also have people, we have animators that work this, uh, uh, that I work with who when we found out we were doing Dory, they're like, I'm, don't even bother, I'm doing Dory. I connect with Dory, I'm only gonna, I love Dory, I'm doing Dory. And that's, a, that's an actually yeah. interesting question of like how competitive it is, is it to do certain characters in these type of films? And is it, is it simply that, you know, somebody takes it for a scene or do they do that character throughout everything? I think, yeah, it's, it's a very organic thing. Um, there are people who say, I'm so, I'm only going to do Dory. Uh, and they have an affinity for the character and it comes through. So we cast them shots that are perfect for what they would love yeah. to do. There's other people who are like, yeah, I'd like to try everything. And so we try to honor that as much as possible. Inevitably, a lot of the animators will do shots. They're like, "I did not, that is amazing. That is a surprise. You're going to get more. <laughs> um, we have sea lions. There was a, an animator who sort of nailed the sea lions. They're like, perfect. <laughs> and, you know, and so it, there's sort of an organic feel to it. It just kind of finds its, its water that's line. A, that's an interesting yeah. point, though. It, it, like, if there's something that sort of like organically comes up like a sea lion mm -hmm. that's so good mm -hmm. during the filmmaking, how much pressure is there to be like, man, I wish we had more sea lion in this movie? Can we get more sea lions? It happens. It happens. I mean, early on, we do all this test. We do, you know, we're, we're like learning the characters, um, moving them around, see if things are broken or not. But we're also doing personality tests. Interesting. Uh, and we, sh we show those to the directors, like, hey, here's an idea. And there's a couple times Andrew was like, that's going in the movie. So the, <laughs> we, as animators, we have the power to sort of, through our performance, unlock ideas. And there was times when we would throw up a performance maybe that wasn't there. And that sent us down a different way than wow, maybe cool. Andrew had thought. The reverse is true, too. We might put, some, uh, put something up there, and Andrew's like, no, that's not what I'm thinking. This mm. is what I want. And we do that, and we're like, yeah, that was obvious. Why that's didn't we cool. do that the first time? So I, it, 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 the whole place feeds on itself that way. That's Just, awesome. Yeah, it's really, really great. 
So the film is the end of like a three or four year cycle. What is that like as an animator? Because I, I, it seems like most films are, you know, six month, year, project mm -hmm. long. What is it like to spend so long and so much work throughout the entire process and to come to the end of a, a project like this? I think what's, it's great to see it sort of come together. You know, it's a painful process sometimes to go through and have things thrown away and do a bunch of work and have it not work and then try something else and then it works and trying to find it. And then when it finally comes together and people respond to it and you see them sort of watch it and get emotional <laughs> or clap, it really, it, it really is, a, it's great to see people love the movie. Um, you know, I'm one of, there's a handful of us who were on for three and a half years. Most of the animators are on for six to eight months mm. and they move on to the next movie. Mm -hmm. um, but I love the world. Uh, it's, I, I'm just so happy that I got to work on the movie uh, and to work with these characters. They're great characters. Um, you know, Ellen's DNA lives in Dory, and just having her working with her on and on this movie is amazing. So, uh, w one thing that this makes me think: uh, Is there any fundamental experiential difference between working on something that's a first time out the gate like Ratatouille versus mm -hmm. doing, you know, Toy Story three? Uh, was it Monsters U and uh -huh. this now? Because uh -huh. I mean, it seems like. Is that a more challenging when it's the first time out, or is it more challenging to try and get back into those uh, mindsets? They both pose different challenges, for sure. Um, they, uh, uh, I think, you know, you need to, uh, there's things sort of written in some of the first ones, or there's things you, like we had to sort of rebuild characters, for example. Mm -hmm. Those challenges don't exist in original, uh, but we're, and everyone, we're made, it's a different story. So... Everything is in service to what the story is, mm -hmm. and everything is about story. Every shot is about the story. Every s bit of performance that we put in there is to service the original story. So even though it's same characters, we're making an original story. It's a difference, you know. So that, and I think that's true. If you see the the Toy Story three, there's mm -hmm. there's three of them, and I think they're all very different, oh, yeah. and they're all really good in their yeah. own way, you know. There, but there is relationships you need to honor mm -hmm. in each one. That poses a, a unique challenge if you make another one. Um, and then making it original, you know, you're trying to make a great story and you're trying to find new characters. So that, that poses an interesting, you know, and, but we have new characters in this movie too. Sure. And it, so that, you know, for us, everything's, everything's sort of a new idea yeah. and, uh, you know, Cool. We don't approach it like we're making a sequel. We approach it like we're making That's a That's awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much for doing this, Michael. Thank you. The film, again, is Finding Dory. I don't really feel like I have to tell people to go see it if they're not. Like, <laughs> I mean, honestly, if you're, if you're not into Finding Dory, like, I don't know. This is, this is a completely different world for me because I know I'll be there right away. Um, and I definitely can't wait to see what's next. So thank you so thank much you. for doing this. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you very Dory. much. Thanks for having me. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the sound style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.